Mina, Kanbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. More judges. This time, chapter 12. A little thing bouncing around in my head. It's not going to be an amazing story. In fact, it's not going to be much of a story at all tonight. I'm going to start at chapter 12, verse 8. I actually back up to verse 7. I'm going to stick with Jephthah, or at least start with Jephthah. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Gileadite died and was buried among the cities of Gilead. After him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons, and he gave away 30 daughters in marriage, and brought in 30 daughters from elsewhere for his sons. He judged Israel seven years. Then Ibzan died and was buried at Bethlehem. After him, Elon the Zebulonite judged Israel. He judged Israel ten years, and Elon the Zebulonite died and was buried at Ijalon in the country of Zebulun. After him, Abdon the son of Hillel the Pirathonite judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 young donkeys. He judged Israel eight years. Then Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirathonite, died and was buried in Pirathon in the land of Ephraim in the mountains of the Amalekites. Not much said about those judges there. Not much said at all. It's just kind of like, okay, this guy did this. This guy judged Israel for this long. He died. Then this guy came up. He judged Israel for this long. He died. Sometimes they mention their kids, how many donkeys they rode on, how many, you know, people they had to gather for their daughters to marry. Very minor details, very small things. And it's just kind of like, and? Got something for me? Is there a cool story like what we read with the last few people? Like, you know, Gideon, he had a sweet story. Jephthah had a tragic story. And then one of Gideon's um, children, Abimelech, had another, like, one of the, just a, a really, um, just this, like, tr tragedy type story. And, um, well, I should say, I was going to say, Je Jephthah's more of the tragedy and the tearjerker, whereas Abimelech, he's just like the betrayal, and, uh, you know, he gets his, he gets his comeuppance at the end. And these guys are just kind of mentioned. I mean, it's cool that they're mentioned. I mean, they got their names mentioned in the Bible. They did the Lord's work. They judged Israel. And obviously, when Israel didn't have a judge, they fell into sin, and that's bad. But wouldn't it be cooler if they did something other than have their children and grandchildren ride on donkeys, and rather than having just um, an even number of sons and daughters and having to go out and find... Um, and find <clears throat> wives for his sons. I think it's opposite of what I said before, but never mind that. It's not important. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if there was something interesting, a story to tell about their life, something of note that was worth mentioning? Because I don't know about you, but when the Lord reviews my life, I want something worth mentioning other than just so it's good to serve the Lord. It's good to do His work. And that's awesome. And again, the fact that these guys were mentioned, that alone deserves some credit. There's merit in that. But wouldn't it be better to have a story that's exciting, a story that's worth elaborating on, other than just a, yep, he was saved. He lived for the Lord. He had some kids. Wouldn't you like a story to tell to your children or your grandchildren? Wouldn't you like a story that can, heaven can just loudly proclaim throughout its eternal realm and something that you can be proud of for all eternity? Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you guys. God bless.